Hello, Flimsy Lunch Trey here again with another video for you today. And in today's video, we're going to be talking about the Shimikaze. So the Shimikaze is a tier 10 tech tree Japanese destroyer, uh, very infamous in the game of World of Warships. Um, but as of the update 0.10.0 with the commander we work, uh, maybe some of you as commanders are wondering what type of build should I be taking on Shimikaze? Um, what should be the build for my commander as well? Well, to me, not much has changed uh, with the, how they've redone some of the skills. Um, so in today's video, we're going to be discussing um, the modules, some of the upgrades, and also uh, the commander skills that I would personally recommend taking. It's just my opinion, so it's up to you how you take that information. Um, as we did in our gearing video, as we continue to do these type of videos, um, first we need to discuss what type of ship are we looking at. So in this video, we're talking about Shimikaze, which is a destroyer, okay? And there's three types of destroyers. You have a, uh, a torpedo class destroyer, you have a gunboat type destroyer, and you have a hybrid class destroyer. The Shimikaze is a torpedo <laughs> type destroyer. So naturally, since she is built as a torpedo destroyer, we want to focus in and enhance the torpedo armament of the Shimikaze. Um, as you can see, three of her uh, quintuplet, three sets of five torpedo tubes, so that 15 torpedoes uh, are located here in the middle. And we'll talk a little bit about her guns, but we're mostly going to be talking about um, the equipment and the commander. So the only module upgrades you can take that are different are you get three different types of torpedoes. Um, so first you have the stock Type 93 torpedoes, which are more of a meme. Um, they're 20 kilometer torpedoes. However, the bad thing about these torpedoes, not only is that they're sort of slow at 65 knots, but their, um, their detectability range by sea is 2.5 kilometers. And the reload time is 127 seconds, mm -hmm. and this is without having any type of um, commander uh, points and helping build that. But we do have some things here that are helping boost up that reload time already. Next, you have the Type 93 uh, Mod 3 torpedoes. These are 12 kilometer torpedoes, and these have the highest maximum damage of the three torpedoes. Um, the torpedo speed is 70 knots, so a little bit faster. Um, and overall, a really good pick with a reload time of 130 seconds. And then last is you have the Type F3, which are also referred to as meme torpedoes. They have a quicker reload time. Uh, their damage is slightly less than the Type 93 Mod 3, but their speed is 80 knots, and their torpedo range is 8 kilometers. So you're, you're, you tend to find yourself more in getting uncomfortably close. Um, when Shimakazu is not really meant so much to do that in the first place. Um, so I tend to stick with these torpedoes, and I'll tell you why that is. So first, that's just um, when we, we're looking at them, it has a modest range of 12 kilometers, which in my opinion is pretty good. It's longer than what you'll find on the standard torpedoes, like on the US gearing at 10.5, unless you take the 16.5 kilometer torpedoes. Um, but these torpedoes just hurt. They hit mm -hmm. like a truck. And really good. So you have the torpedo speed of 70 knots, which is rather fair. Um, but what I like about these torpedoes the most is uh, beyond their, their good range, high uh, maximum damage, um, is their flooding chance. So the flooding chance of these torpedoes uh, with no other modifications done uh, is 406% chance of causing flooding. Um, on the stock torpedoes, you have a flood chance of 355%, and on the Type F3, you have a 361% chance of flooding. And of course, you can add signals to in, uh, further um, enhance, uh, increase the chances of flooding. But another reason why I like these uh, torpedoes is the uh, detectability range by sea. The stock ones are 2.5 kilometers, but these are 1.7 kilometers. And then when you look at the 80 knots, uh, they should be 1.8, I believe it is. Yeah, 1.8 kilometers. Um, so even though these have a better um, or s smaller detectability range, um, and these are 70 knot torpedoes, these are 80 knot torpedoes. So it's l actually a little less reaction time. And so the more, the less the reaction time of firing torpedoes for giving the chance an enemy ship to dodge and avoid them, uh, the better. So 
that's why these are tend to be pretty easy to avoid since they have the 2.5 kilometer detectability range. Um, but I like these um, sitting at the 1.7. And you can fight more from range. You don't have to get as uncomfortably close as you would with the Type F3 torpedoes. So moving right along, uh, for our first slot and upgrades, we're going to take the main armaments modification one, uh, which uh, the risk of your main battery and your torpedo tubes becoming incapacitated is negative 20%. It's always a good thing. And also your main battery survivability, your torpedo tube survivability is plus 50%. And your main battery repair time and your torpedo tube repair time, if those modules should become, or upgrades should be, or armaments, uh, should become incapacitated, um, it repairs them a bit quicker. Um, you also are given this, but you're really not worrying about secondaries, so you're not worrying about AA the survivability, and you're not worrying about um, the magazine modification, um, which reduces your ship's magazine uh, deting, detonating by. 70% because if you're playing random, if you're playing ranked, if you're playing clan battles, you just want to take uh, the Juliet Charlie combat signal, uh, which completely eliminates the risk of your ship's magazine detonating. So better to use it on the main armaments modification one. Uh, when we look at second slot, there's only real, one really um, ideal solution uh, choice, and that is the engine room protection. Uh, which reduces the risk of your engine and your steering gears uh, from becoming incapacitated by negative 20%. And if your engine or your steering gears do get knocked out, the repair time is cut by negative 20%. Uh, slot 3, since she is a torpedo type destroyer, we want to build on the torpedo tubes. So we're going to take torpedo tubes modification 1. So that's going to increase our torpedo uh, speed uh, by positive 5%. So already having these modules on, you, you can see it's, these numbers are already altered a little bit. Um, because, for example, if I tick this off, you're going to see our torpedo speed is 67 knots. And I'll just go ahead and take this one off too so you guys get an idea what that looks like when we get there. To help give you more idea of what stock looks like. Um, so... Really, we want to take the um, torpedo tubes modification one because of the speed increase of torpedoes. The torpedo tubes traverse speed also increased by 20%. Great. And the risk of those torpedo tubes from becoming incapacitated is negative 40%. So that's uh, really good overall. So I'll definitely uh, want to take that. Uh, for slot four, you want to take a uh, propulsion modification one. Um, really, it's, it can be a tie between this one and steering gears modification. I personally like propulsion modification because it reduces uh, time taken to reach full engine power when accelerating, negative uh, 50%. So it helps you dodge, get out of the way. Maybe you're sitting in a smoke screen you, and someone has a hydroacoustic surge popped and all of a sudden torpedoes are spotted coming at you. Um, you can quickly accelerate to be able to maneuver better. At the same time, you can take the steering gears modification one, which reduces the, the rudder shift time by negative 20%. Um, but for me, I like that propulsion of being able to take off um, quicker. Uh, this fifth slot is a no-brainer. You want to take concealment system modification um, because that reduces your detectability range by sea and by air by negative 10%, uh, as well as squadron detectability range and the dispersion of shells fired by your enemies attacking your ship is increased by plus five percent um, so definitely want to take that and again we don't have any skills mastered for the commander yet and we can see that that helps bring our detectability range by sea down to 6.4 percent or 6.4 kilometers detectability range by air three kilometers um, and then you have your assured detectability detectability range and then your detectability after firing your main guns and smoke always important to keep that one in mind for six slot, we want to take uh, torpedo tubes modification two. Um, this uh, reduces the reload time. Uh, at the same time, the risk of your torpedo tubes becoming incapacitated is increased by 50%. But if you remember, we've taken this one, which reduces the risk of your torpedo tubes becoming incapacitated by negative 40%. And these, uh, this one also uh, reduces the risk of torpedo tubes becoming incapacitated, negative 20%. So when we take this, think of it as a, uh, we still get a negative uh, 10% buff uh, overall. Um, so when looking at the reload time of what the torpedo tubes are now, 
uh, is 153 seconds, which is a really long time. So then when we throw torpedo tubes modification two on, we can see that that's going to drop from 153 to 130 seconds. So really good stuff. All right, let's look at the commander. So you want to do uh, the bread and butter build uh, of destroyers for those first 10 points, which is essentially it's your defensive skills, it's your survivability. You're going to want to take uh, preventive maintenance, which reduces the risk of your main batteries, your torpedo tubes, your steering gears, and your engine uh, from becoming incapacitated and decreases that uh, by 30%, so really good skill. Next, you're gonna to wanna to take last stand. Um, the ship remains partially able to sustain speed and maneuverability with the engine and steering gears becoming incapacitated. Maneuverability um, is life for a destroyer. If you're caught dead in the water because your engine's knocked out, that means you're gonna be very easy for the enemy to finish off because you're not a moving target. Um, secondly, if your steering gear uh, does get knocked out it means you're not just making circles and maybe circling back into enemy fire when you want to be going away so the two points as well worth having that slight penalty to still be able to uh, move along with your engine and also still be able to use your uh, steering gears uh, be able to maneuver with your rudder but with the penalty applied uh, for six points, the next is you want to do your survivability expert which increases the health pull um, for each ship tier. So we have a tier 10, so it's basically Shimikaze, it's 10 times uh, 350. Um, so if we look at survivability now, we can see that we our hit points are at 17,900, but as soon as we take survivability expert, um, that increases um, to 21,400, which is great. It keeps you in the game longer, uh, opportunity to do more damage, and help make the game winning changes uh, for your team. Um, at the, towards the end of the battle if you're still alive at that point and clinging on for dear life. Um, so then for your last four points of those 10 points, you wanna take concealment expert. Um, so the ship's detectability range is negative 10%, uh, but one of the things it doesn't actually say is it also reduces uh, your detectability range by air. So when we take this, we can see it drops our detectability range by sea to 5.8 kilometers and detectability range by air to 2.7 kilometers. So that's uh, really helpful, really good. We can see that doesn't, a short detectability range is always two kilometers regardless, and your detectability after firing main guns and smoke is still the same at 2.6. So if I go ahead and master this 10 points, and don't forget that you also have your signals um, and your camouflage. So with, and specifically with regards to um, concealment, uh, we can just throw on a camouflage and we're going to watch our concealment range drop because this one has a detectability range by seed negative three percent and it further increases dispersion of shells fired by enemies attacking your ship so now we're down to 5.6 kilometers which is really nice um, especially when concealment is life um, as a destroyer so we're going to leave that on and we're going to jump back into the commander here um, and then we're going to uh, finish off uh, with those I have nine more points left. I don't have a full 21 point commander yet uh, since they've increased that during this rework. But I'll show you what I would take those last two points to as well that I don't have. So after you get your bread and butter build of 10 points, I would recommend taking a priority target next. Um, now this is, this can vary. Uh, it's up to you whether you want to take this or not. Um, for me, it's part of kind of like it's, um, comfortability to know if I'm detected by another ship um, that I know one how many ships are focusing on me because playing the destroyer lines like the US the hybrid destroyers um, you really you learn from that how your guns are important and your guns have really good hitting damage uh, with the Shimakaze, so it's you shouldn't only just focus only using your torpedoes and never fire your guns off once that happens too much in this game um, So I like to open up every once in a while So I like to take that party target and in reality with your concealment at tier 10 You're gonna outspot most all enemy destroyers unless your uh, matchmaking gets mixed up um, where you have some tier 9 or tier 8 because the I believe the Kagero and the Yugamo the tier 8 and tier 9 Japanese shores have slightly better concealment. Um, and if I'm not 
mistaken, maybe Kosakta is a tier 8 as well. Uh, for the next three points, uh, so a 15 point build, I would recommend taking fill the tubes. So this uh, increases the re or decreases the reload time uh, of your torpedo tubes. So right now we're sitting at 130 seconds, but we take this and now we look, we're at 117 seconds. So continuing to maximize our uh, torpedo tube uh, reload time and it helps continue to get those uh, 15 torpedoes in the water constantly, so it really makes you a threat. And you can just, and alone in a Shimakaze, you can prevent a hole. If your flank collapses and you're the last one, just the fact that you can dump 15 torpedoes into the water well, will make cruisers and battleships um, think twice maybe before they aggressively push in. Um, and then after that, I would recommend taking RPF. So, uh, also, it's, it's called radio location skill. So this, after this skill is mastered, the player will have the direction to the nearest enemy ship indicated to them. The enemy player will be alerted that a bearing was taken on their ship, or it's like they get this like little located sign. Maybe that's happened to you before. Um, and then with the skills, you can kind of see there's this arc, and that while you're sailing, that arc will uh, be above your aiming icon, and it'll direct you to where the closest ship is. So the reason why I like that, particularly with the Japanese destroyers, is because your uh, turret traverse time is so slow. Uh, so your turret traverse 180 degree turn time is 22.8 seconds. And when you compare that to the gearing, the gearing has eight, like 8 point something seconds for the 100 degree turn time of the turret traverse. So there's a few bonuses with having the RPF because as I'm saying with your turrets, it helps you to know where to have your turrets um, aiming, right? So I'll go ahead and click master for this right now. Um, it helps you to be able to effectively know where if there's a destroyer pushing in at you, uh, because when you look at uh, Shimikaze, we'll go back into the preview mode, she has three turrets, but two of those three turrets are located on the rear. So oftentimes I'm positioning myself where the, the stern of my ship, the rear of my ship, is facing towards um, where that threat may be coming from. Maybe I'm backing into a cap, or I'm just positioning myself. Let's say there's a, I'm getting RPF skill somewhere over this way, or even say over this way. So I'm going to kind of angle out, maybe more like this, and keep those two rear guns uh, ready to go. Uh, because when you look at the uh, the maximum HE shell damage, it's 2,150, and then your maximum AP shell damage is 2,200. Um, so these these do hurt when they hit. I mean, you can chuck a destroyer for uh, anywhere between two to four, maybe 5,000 uh, damage, depending on how hard you hit them. But the reload time, as you see, is 5.7 seconds. But because Shimikaze is a torpedo destroyer, we don't so much want to focus on the guns, we want to focus on the torpedo tubes, but we also want to give ourselves some helpful information to know where threats may be approaching from to help us uh, disengage or just be ready for when the threat approaches. So that's why I like to take uh, RPF um, on the Shimikaze and torpedo Japanese destroyer uh, torpedo line anyways. Um, this is actually a relatively similar build to what Flamu does as well. And you can check out his video on that and see what he says and thinks as well. Uh, but that video was before the 10.0 update where, for example, priority target was a one point skill. So on and so forth. Now we do have uh, two more points that we would uh, want to spend. Um, where would I recommend spend, spending those at? Um, honestly, I would recommend spending those next two points on Swift Fish. So it increases your torpedo speed by plus 5%. So when we look at our torpedoes right now, there are 70 knots is our torpedo speed. But when we take this, it gets increased to 74 knots. So it's an even further less reaction time um, by um, enemy ships uh, and players to build to effectively maneuver. So I like getting giving um, that speed buff um, to my torpedoes. Now, um, you could change things up. Maybe you don't want to take priority target. Um, so that would, uh, at this point in time, uh, let's just redistribute that and see what that might look like. Because you still have to take, let's see, we'll, we'll still do our bread and butter build. 
Uh, let's say you don't take prior target, but you do want to have these two. Um, so then that means you'd have four points in total left. I have two right now because I'm at uh, 17 points, 18, 19, and then a 21 point commander, add two more. Um, you could take those four points elsewhere. For example, you could use that on Swift and Silence because most of the times in Shimakaze, you are not detected. Um, and it increases your ship speed while she remains undetected, um, plus 8%. So it helps you uh, maneuver along uh, better, but your reload time of your main battery um, gets a slight nerf, um, which would it be, yeah, six seconds. So you could do that. You could do, maybe you still want to focus on Swiftfish, and then you have two points. You could say, hey, I want to increase the chances of causing flooding even more, and I'd actually like to have uh, grease the gears um, so that my turret traverse time uh, is decreased by three seconds to 19.8 seconds. Um, that's nice. This is a build I have considered doing something like this instead of doing uh, this. Uh, but at the moment, um, this is the direction I'm leaning to go uh, right now. Um, but it could be sometime in the future, maybe I, I just kind of get tired. I feel like I'm comfortable enough where I don't need priority target where I end up going uh, this direction. Um, so my main recommendation is I like to have this. I like to know how many ships are focusing me when I am detected. Um, it helps me know if I need, it's, just, it's quick better for me to disengage. Again, you're a torpedo destroyer. You're not a hybrid destroyer. You're not a gunboat destroyer. So it is possible that you could just drop that and go with this or even go with this if you want to as example. This would probably be my second recommendation if you want to focus a bit more on the torpedo tubes and have your guns uh, turn a little bit faster. Uh, so we're going to uh, master this for now. And then, okay, why don't I take some of the other skills? Well, I've, I've showed you a couple other uh, skills already that I would talk about so we know what these do. Um, you don't need to worry about gun feeder, the uh, time taken to switch between shell type. Um, incoming fire alert. If you're detected, usually a destroyer, you should expect enemy to focus you, but that's not always the case, so you don't really need to worry about that one. Power technician, not worth it. You can use those two points elsewhere. Uh, consumables enhancements. Uh, only two of the four work with Shimakaze, being the bottom two, the action time of the smoke generator, plus 10%. Um, so it gives you a slightly longer um, action time of that smoke generator. So let's say if smoke is 20 seconds, you get a 22 second uh, buff. Um, and then the engine boost consumable action time. Um, so you can be speeding along for a little bit longer. Um, but for me, I just, it's, I don't like to take it. Just because it only does uh, affects two of the four total. Um, the extra heavy AP shells, this might make more sense on a German destroyer or a Russian destroyer, um, but you don't need to worry about using it um, on the Shimakaze because Shimakaze is just, she's not the type of destroyer that would really benefit the most from this. Um, oh, I actually messed that up. I want to have that one. <laughs> That's what we want for right now. Um, after that, you have priority target, which we've talked about um, that along with this one. So my next two points I do intend to spend on Swift Fish, uh, but right now this is my build. Uh, next you have main battery and AA specialist. Again, Shimakaze is a torpedo type destroyer. Um, I wouldn't uh, spend the three points here. You can do this with a different destroyer that's actually a hybrid or a gunboat destroyer that gets a much better benefit. Um, adrenaline Rush, yeah, it's nice to have maybe a slightly better reload time and your torpedo tube reload time, um, but that means you're taking a lot of damage. And ideally, as Shimkaze uh, Destroyer, you're not being detected most of the time. So it's better off just going with something like Fill the Tubes, so you get that buff on your reload time already on your torpedoes. Uh, then you have IFHE. Just don't worry about spending your three points here. You can do other things with it um, and focusing on uh, your Shin Mikaze captain build. Then you have superintendent, um, which because you spend most of your time not detected, 
Um, getting that extra smoke screen is eh, not totally worth it when you can be using um, other teammates smoke screens or if you're just utilizing firing from over an island as an example um, to remain undetected and you get one extra engine boost um, but to me I don't always burn through all three of mine depending on what's going on in the battle so for me I can use those uh, get those three points better spent elsewhere um, then you have main battery and a expert um, so your main battery firing range increases by 20 percent and your damage from your AA shell explosions plus 15 percent again this is focusing on the main guns um, and Shimakaze, it's a torpedo or destroyer. So you, you keep hearing me come back to that. I keep coming back to that for a reason. So we would rather want to invest in the torpedoes. Uh, Swift and Silence, we talked about. Um, if you drop something like the priority target and you want to pick this up instead, but then that means you're giving up um, other possible options. We've talked about RPF. Um, you have Fearless Brawler. So the number of shell explosions in your AA Savils plus 1%. Your ship detectability range is increased by 5%. Um, it reduces the main battery load time after the ship has been detected by the enemy by negative 10%. Again, torpedo type destroyer. Uh, then you have Dazzle, um, which has been is one of the new skills as of the commander rework from update 0.10.0. Um, and so that reduces the accuracy of hostile fire directed at your ship for 15 seconds after you've been detected. So dispersion of shells fired by enemies is uh, attacking your ship is increased by 20%. Um, so that sounds pretty good on paper, but if you look at the little white mouse, um, she's done some testing with this, and it's not a crazy difference. Like when you take Dazzle, you just you notice that that um, she did like a side by side comparison of uh, with uh, Dazzle on a destroyer and without Dazzle, and with Dazzle, you just notice that center grouping wasn't quite as tight. And if you want to see that comparison, you can go to the Little White Mouse's forum, or you can go to my gearing uh, recommendations uh, for the upgrades and the captain seals, because I kind of talk about that a little bit more there. But for me, it's not worth spending um, the four points here when I can invest it in something else like RPF, which I get a lot more use out of. Um, the last thing I want to make note of, um, as someone pointed out in the gearing video, is also talking about the legendary uh, unique upgrade that you get on these tier 10 ships. And so it's a also a torpedo tube modification, and it's a really good one. Um, and so the question is, well, how do I get that? Because uh, the legendary unique upgrade is not here. Um, so that is in your armory. And in order to get it, you have to have access to the research bureau. And in order to get access to research bureau is one of two ways. One is you have to have at least uh, five tier 10 ships. And then once you get your fifth tier 10 ship, the research bureau unlocks. Or secondly is like participating in the dockyard and getting research points through that. So I actually gained access to it through the Anchorage event, uh, dockyard event. And when I only had like, I think it was four tier 10 ships. So it'll pop up here. If you don't have access to Research Bro, you won't see this icon. Um, but when we scroll down, you begin to see the unique upgrades for tier 10 ships. And we have the Shimakaze right here. And so we can see it goes in slot six, torpedo quick reload system, improves the ship's torpedo armament capabilities at long range. Torpedo tube traverse speed, negative 70%. Torpedo tube reload time, negative 25%, really good. Risk of torpedo tubes becoming incapacitated, plus 50%, eh. But you see how that plus 50% risk is the same as what we have on the um, six slot on the torpedo tubes modification two uh, already. Um, but instead of having a negative 15% reload time, we have a negative 25% reload time. So your torpedo tubes are even reloading faster. Uh, Flamu um, takes this. And so this here is a nerf. So this negative 70% makes your torpedo tube traverse speed even slower than what it already is. Right now it's six seconds, and this is gonna add something up to like 10 seconds, roughly uh, on the, tur the torpedo tube traverse speed. So uh, I want to draw this video to a close because it's already kind of gone for a while. Uh, but I hope that you find this guide helpful. Again, this is just my opinion of what to take. If you have questions, let me know in the comments. 
And if you have different suggestions, throw those in the comments as well. Um, this is just what I found has worked well for me uh, with Shimakaze, as I do enjoy playing her, as it's a different taste for me than playing the gearing. So if you liked today's video, give it a thumbs up. If you didn't like it, give it a thumbs down. Subscribe if you want to see more. And if you have already subscribed, thanks so much, as we are over 100 subscriber now, subscribers now and looking forward to continuing to build the community here with you. So until next time, take care.